Well, welcome back. It's time for our very first hot topic, and uh, it has to do with the money that has been budgeted for Tinubu and Shetima to eat and travel abroad. Well, it's a recurring decimal that while the political class in Nigeria feed fat and are totally insulated against the suffering their policies meet out to citizens, the same citizens are constantly called upon to make sacrifices for the nation. As President Bola Tinubu inherits 11.92 billion naira feeding and foreign trips budget for him and his vice, Nigerians believe it is immoral and a lack of empathy for this government to rub opulence in the face of sufferings of the citizens while maintaining a wieldy and overbloated government with a plethora of aids at various tiers of government. This is our first hot topic, and we have been joined by Dr. Frank Ter Abagan, Senior Lecturer and Specialist in International Economic Relations, Strategic Studies, and Policy, Public Policy at the Department of Political Science, Benue State University, Mark Rudi. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning. It's Thank good to morning. have you join us to discuss this, especially since you're joining us from Benue State, the food basket of the nation, as we discuss this huge amount that has been budgeted for feeding. Okay. All right, yes. so let me, let, let's break it down first. Um, the breakdown shows that 331.79 million naira will be spent on yes. the president's feeding, while that of his deputy is 176.92 million naira. Um, how practicable is this? In well, uh, thank you very much for this question. Um, I'm, I'm rather surprised that Nigerians are reacting now if you, you, just like you rightly said, this provision in the budget was already appropriated and signed into law by the previous government. So I wonder why the civil society groups and Nigerians didn't react at that time. They did. I wonder why they're reacting now. No, doctor, because they the did. Nigerians did reaction, react back then. Nigerians did react back then, but it meant nothing to the people in authority. The intensity of the reaction, and because I monitored it at that time, the intensity of the reaction was not as it is now. You know, because maybe because of some of the policies of the Tunable government that has taken us off so far, and people are more sensitive about these things now. The expectation is that Tunable has told Nigerians to endure because of some of the harsh economic policies that he has put in place the removal of the subsidy and the floating of the Naira exchange rate, Naira dollar exchange rate. So the, the situation is that we should, you know, NGO. So it is expected that government also reduces its overhead costs, its spending. But we are not seeing that kind of sign. As a matter of fact, there was a, there was, there was a, a, a move to even increase the emoluments of public office holders. So this, this particular kind of thinking is what is making Nigerians to feel very bad. That, okay, if you are, you are trying to enjoy your suffering, for whose benefit? We have to see a government that is a bit trying to reduce costs. Okay, uh, it was observed that the president had a convoy of more than 200 vehicles. You, you and I know that PMS is very expensive. The, the, uh, the speaker of the House of Representatives Jidian Abbas recently approved the appointments of 33 persons and added to that, making it 35. And this is entrenched in the, in the laws. So, yeah. I mean, the cost of governance is simply too high. If you are telling Nigerians to endure and you are not also taking steps, but your the very government is because government is expensive to run. You have to reduce personnel, you have to reduce logistics and overhead. Because if you think that it's only you, that has issues and the Nigerian public doesn't have, we're going to create a lot of disaffection and bad feeling. What I'm trying to say in essence is that there was a budget and Nigerians would have, despite all that, they would have reacted. Also, it behoves on the National Assembly to wade into this matter. You understand? We make a new budget estimate to reflect the current economic times because the value of the Naira has gone down. Any kind of deficit spending by government will only increase inflation in the long run. And who pays the price for this? The ordinary Nigerian citizen. So this is the, the, the whole scenario, and this is what is creating the disaffection. 
If the president has given us these two bitter pills to swallow, on his own part too, he should take, be taking steps to reduce the cost of governance, reduce the number of appointees in government, and reduce the, the logistics, number of cars in the fleet. The presidential fleet has 10 aircraft. We don't need that. Advanced countries don't have that kind of number. Exactly. Uh, if you're tall, yes, if you're tall, you're going to use a presidential fleet for private reasons. You pay from your own pocket. That mm -hmm. is what is done in other clients. And in you advanced understand? countries, so, in developed countries, because we are developing, yes. in developed countries, yes. the presidents do not get fed on taxpayers' money. The U.S. specifically, no, you, I know you, you that. You feed yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so in the current instability and high inflation, uh, the budget is quite unrealistic. So President Tinubu inherited this. Can he not change it? Because I know that supplementary budgets, there is such a thing as supplementary budget. Can yes, he change I, it? I, I Should am. he change it? And do you see him as having the political will to change it? I am hoping he doesn't put in for a supplementary budget because it will only be funded by deficit finance. We, the Nigerians are asking critical questions now. Uh, we have had a month of no subsidy payments. So the question now is, where is the money and how are you going to spend it? Uh, if you want to lead people, you, you have to show people that you're also concerned about their welfare. You're also concerned about issues that affect them. Too many times we had a situation where a government will be formed with promises to take care of the people. And what happens is that when they enter office, they now start carrying out policies that impact negatively on the people. So this is the situation. I don't think Nigerians, what I'm presently seeing, will tolerate a situation whereby they are suffering. Uh, they, they, I, nobody uh, is unaware of the very harsh impact of just the rise in PMS, because we are not a developed economy. And, and energy, which we derive from PMS, is used to create, you know, uh, electricity using generating sets for some people in the manufacturing sector or even in services. So you have taken that particular resource and you maybe tripled its, 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 its price cost. So Nigerians are feeling that impact. So many businesses have been impacted negatively and are shutting down. So we need to do something about alternatives. You cannot have an economy where you don't subsidize energy. Even in the developed parts of the world, energy is subsidized. But we have, we have accepted that, okay, you said you needed money, it was a waste. So Nigerians are expecting to see the returns on this, this particular policy you have enacted. And also you floated the, 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 the Naira now. It's almost the same thing. You, there's no special preference. Anybody can go and I, I can get, get the Naira for many of the banks at the rates due to, you know, the effective demand and supply functions. So what is going to happen now is the government has to show Nigerians that it is sincere. The president has to do a lot to show Nigerians that he has their interest in that by implementing policies that will alleviate their suffering. If Nigerians perceive that they are going through suffering and the government is busy spending taxpayers' money, levanting from one foreign capital to another, you will have to deal with a lot of public anger. And this is one of the unfortunate situations we are praying we don't see. What midterm fiscal scenarios should we uh, expect to play out? Should this government decide to do something critical about this? The government can wire money, right? Move money from one aspect yes. of government to a more important and more dire aspect of government. Yes, yes, they, they can do that. One, I mentioned the palliative. Uh, you know, we were not just existing in the world alone. We're amongst other countries that have passed through this kind of scenario. What is going to happen is we need a situation whereby the suffering of the people, the suffering of the people has to be ameliorated. The Americans have the social security act. Anytime there's inflation, the quantum of inflation is computed and its monetary value added to what you take as your salary, as your basic salary. So it's a fluid thing. If there is an increase in the cost of living, 
it is calibrated and put in your remuneration. Only our political leaders do this in Nigeria. And it's not good enough. It's not fair on the sincere terms. In terms of revenue, we are taking, and I just hope the government does not take loans. If they take loans, I'm telling you, we're headed for a lot of trouble. The 77 trillion debt is over our heads. Though I just read, just yesterday, that the president has uh, been given opportunity to take a facility from the World Bank about uh, $500 million. All of this comes at a price because we have to go into debt servicing now if we take money. The thing is, if we're taking money, if we're going to invest with this money, it is not a bad thing. But the behavior of Nigerian governments over time has shown that we don't do this. Instead, a lot of corruption takes place and money gets into the wrong places, increasing the suffering of Nigerians. So one, government has to reduce personnel and logistic costs. That is one. Government also has to tackle corruption. No matter how beautiful your policies are, if you are not stemming the tide of corruption, you're going to have a lot of challenges. And this will not all go well for you. So these are the sum of the steps the government has to take. There shouldn't be any borrowing. We cannot, the economy cannot simply afford borrowing. We're already doing deficit finance. That's it. And then you have to show Nigerians that you understand their suffering, you understand their plight. How do you, are you going to do this? Implement, start implementing the palliatives. Nigerians need this. You need to do things that will rejig the economy. And this is very important. If the government does these things, I think the welfare of Nigerians will improve. Yes, it, indeed, uh, the government has called on Nigerians to make more sacrifices and be patient with this government. But as you have alluded, we are, we are yet to get some sort of bold statement from President Tinubu and some commitment to show that they are indeed um, interested in curbing um, corruption, big government structures, and huge government spending. And on, until Nigerians begin to see a huge commitment or bold statements from President Tinubu, the call for sacrifice, the call for sacrifice from Nigerians, um, how easy do you see him getting that support from Nigerians or trust from Nigerians? Because without corruption being dealt with, Nigerians do not see how this country can move forward in any way, shape, or form. Well, the, the government has already received the support. Uh, of course, it, it, there's, a, there, there's a case in court, the two contenders to the pre who contested the presidency with him are in court. But what the verdict now shows is that he won. There's no other way to show proof that Nigerians supported you if you didn't win elections. He won. So that's number one. You won the elections as it is. You won elections, you're already in office, you're sworn in. There's no other way for Nigerians to support you. You are to return the favor Nigerians gave you by do carrying out policies that will reduce this. One, we want a situation whereby we'll have clear statistics. How much have you earned from well, the non the stoppage of oil subsidy? That is one. Two. Uh, to, what, to what particular uh, palliatives are you quickly implementing? There have been meetings, but will not come out. There's been no definite, clear policy of alleviating the hardship. These two particular policies, I'm talking about the oil subsidy removal and uh, uh, the floating of the Naira rate as far so far. Of course, they are mentioning, I heard mention of the former head, head of service, Stephen Oronsai's panel report, which is talking about streamlining the government agencies. And some of them look as if they're doing kind of the same function. Because I think it behoves on government to realize that some agencies are only dualizing the particular rules other agencies do. I've always said in the past that I don't see the reason why if you have an ICPC and an EFCC, it should be one organization that's in charge of economic and financial crimes. Mm -hmm. There's no need for two. So these are some of those hard choices that government must take. It must start with government. They are the biggest spender and the biggest vector. So they should reduce the cost of governance. Mm -hmm. If that is done, and I just see that sincerity, you will see support more for government. This is the way to go. They have to reduce the cost of government. It is simply too high. 
Well, thank you, Dr. Abagan, for your time and insight on this very crucial topic because Nigerians are talking about it everywhere you go. Nigerians are having these discussions and it is something that the government would and should pay attention to because Nigeria belongs to everyone and indeed we want to see Nigeria yes. move forward. That is a prayer of every single Nigerian. Nigerians are in trauma right now. You're coming to work, you're going to the market, you're going no anywhere you go. Nigerians are groaning. Nigerians are in serious pains. And so whatever this government can do to urgently fix things and reduce the pain and the sufferings of Nigerians, they should please do so. All right, thank you so much. Thank Dr. You. Frank Ter Abagen is a senior lecturer and specialist in international economic relations, strategic studies, and Public Policy at the Department of Political Science, Benue State University, Makordi. We'll be back much. with our second hot topic in a moment. Do stay with us.